We are at one of my favorite places on the planet. We are at the farmhouse restaurant at Rogers Gardens in Corona Del Mar with the only, the one and only, Chef Rich Mead. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you for coming. Oh, we're so excited to hear from you, literally from the chef's mouth, um, all about what's happening here at the farmhouse. And I just love this place. And I know that it's crowded all the time, so I'm not alone in loving this place. But you have created something so special. Tell us about what you love here. Well, we started a few years ago. We were talking to people that own the gardens and it's been this kind of uh, journey and it took a couple of years to put the thing together. Uh, there was a designer that, that, that put the idea together and so his name is uh, Ken, Ken Osenka okay. and he, what we talked about and what my food is, I felt we, it came together so perfectly in this, in this environment and so it, for years I've been going to Santa Monica Farmers Market. I've been working with farmers. I had a restaurant called Sage, I had a restaurant called Sage on the Coast. I had a restaurant in Anaheim Hills called Canyon, and we used to have uh, vegetable plots. We would grow vegetables out there. Wow. And for me, the whole idea was to understand the food and the vegetables and, and where they came from and, and how you picked them and just how you used them. And so as time has gone on, I'm kind of doing the same thing I've been doing forever, and it just kind of hit. And then you put it in this environment, which is just so perfect. It's an outdoor environment with a and awning that's, it's, it's just, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, it's such an, a great match. You're indoor, we did, outdoor. We just ate lunch here, yeah. so we totally agree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's indoor, outdoor, but the, the whole concept for you is literally, we, we've also, we've often heard about from farm to table, but for you, it's really field to fork. And, and, and you're it's, taking it an extra step. Yes, and, and it's really exciting because for all these years I was working with, there, these farmers become my friends. Uh -huh. um, you go every Wednesday or you go Saturdays, or I go up to Fountain Valley on Saturday, there's a farm out there by the Costco, and I buy produce from those people. And, and this has enabled me to buy, you know, to really, really serve this produce. And the idea was very, very simple, but very, very fresh. And that's what we're working for. Amazing. And do you, is it the same with the proteins? You work with the ranchers and In certain sustainable? Instances, there's a, um, a fishing, there's a guy named Ryan Trolley that goes out fishing. Mm -hmm. He's going out tonight. Uh, I forgot, I have to text him. But he, uh, <laughs> He's going out tonight, and they'll, whatever they catch, they do one, one line, long, long line with a hook. Uh -huh. Not multiple hooks, not nets. It, it's a very sustainable way. We utilize those guys as best we can. I have a friend that I, works for Superior Seafood that I buy my seafood from, and he's very well aware of sustainability. He's a chef. Uh, he was a chef. He's a friend forever. We've been doing farm dinners. Anytime somebody asks me to do these uh, charity events, he always helps. Um, so he's kept me the fish we use He's very aware of, say, the pirates in Thailand, the people that, that, that use human labor. Um, that, so he's very aware of what's going on and how they're being caught. And that's what we try to maintain a, a level with our seafood. With our meat, uh, we use a company called Brant Beef for ribeye. They're out in Brawley. Um, it's grass-fed and then finished on grain. Uh, we use some chicken comes from a, a farm up in Bakersfield called Autonomy Farm. Um, this is a pastured chicken. Uh, I know her, I know how she raises them, it's, it's kind of neat. And then we get eggs from her, we get eggs from a guy named Peter Shaner down in Valley, Valley Center. Um, other meats, we try and stay uh, grass-fed to a point, also natural. Uh, to a certain point, we don't, it, it's, some people aren't, grass-fed is a tough sell sometimes, yeah. it's a different flavor. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny with the ribeye, it's the brand beef ribeye, the thought was, if you're gonna serve a big old, big piece of ribeye, you want to serve one that's good, <laughs> and it has a flavor that people recognize. Um, Autonomy Farms raises uh, the grass-fed beef, and I, I've been eating it, and it's it's very very good. It's really wonderful. But if you go above medium, it can start. It, there's a taste that's a little off for some people. But what you end up with is the cost is so high from a small farmer or a small rancher mm -hmm. because they're going to farmers markets and they're selling directly to a, to a customer. It's hard for me to, to pass that cost on. I, I try to be very fair in what, what we yeah. charge here. Well, that's one thing I was going to say. Like outside of the amazing work you're doing with sustainability, the food is delicious and it's moderately priced. I, and so, yeah, yeah, we work with that. It's always been something that I want to feed as many people as I can. I want to make money, but in the end, I, you know, I, I enjoy, we, I had these restaurants, Sage and Sage on the Coast, and my first restaurant was in East Bluff in 97, mm -hmm. and it was fun because uh, it, it, you know, was a neighborhood restaurant, and everybody told me at the time, when, they, when the Irvine Company leased me the space, they said that East Bluff was a dead space, mm -hmm. and over the years, it took me a couple of years, and we developed a, a real great following, and part of the thing was you couldn't just, I couldn't buy brand beef, I did buy brand beef, but we didn't make any money off of it. 
But sometimes you're trying to turn people on to something really cool. Yeah. But in the end, it's a business. Yeah. How do you design the menus? Every, if everything is so fresh and you never actually know what you're going to have, how, in fact, do you work on the menus? So we're in the process of changing out the menu. Um, so when you go to the farmer's market, I mean, I know what the seasons are to a certain extent. And sometimes it's been interesting because of the rain, because of the water situation, some of the seasons have changed. And so you follow these things, but I know, you know, I know what the guy's gonna have next week. I know what Peter Shaner's growing. I know what Gloria Tamai's growing. There's still corn up there. Even though it doesn't seem like it's summer anymore, people are growing, you know, there's still peaches. The peaches probably have two weeks left. So we're working on changing things out. But the idea is, is, is you understand there's certain seasons, there are always gonna be seasons. The seasons have to do with the, the length of the day and the sun and the soil and things like that. But by understanding that, you, you slowly just start working your way out. Sometimes it's funny, there's still tomatoes. They're not as the same as they were in the middle of the summer. They're still very good, and these guys are still growing them, but you have to start pushing away from that. But in the same sense, I'm trying to support the guys that are growing this stuff. Right. And, it's, and it tastes good. Some of the stuff we're making is so good, it's hard to change. What's one of your favorite things to make? Um, I love the roast chicken we do. And then I love this Autonomy Farms we chicken, and we stuff it with, uh, it's, it's garlic and uh, herbs and Dijon mustard and it is roasted and then we find different ways to, to present it. All of a sudden I'm really hungry. I know, right? <laughs> I can smell it in the background and it's not, I mean, oh. So it's, it's fun. It's, yeah. it's, it's textures, it's, it's flavors, it's uh, so in working, it's, but we're so busy sometimes it's so hard to make these changes and it's just, but right now it's squashes, butternut squash, spaghetti squash, things like that are starting to show up. You're going to see like a sprouting broccoli. Um, and so you'll see the seasons and then you'll see uh, the tomatoes will go away and we're trying to replace it with root vegetables and things like yeah. that. So you still have those beautiful salads. That's what I had last time. And so you try, I mean, we still have the salad, you just change it a little bit. Yeah. But the chopped grilled vegetable salad, I don't know if you had that one I yet. did. That's going to stay and That's so will amazing. the Asian chicken salad. That stays. Amazing. Well, we're definitely coming back. Chef Mead, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate you and we appreciate having farmhouse in the neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.